The next generation Xbox AMD hardware specs have apparently been leaked and there have been some rumors about how powerful it really is. And what I've seen that's been reported, everything I've been saying is coming true. Let's get into it. So the next gen hardware from the AMD and Xbox partnership has been leaked. But make sure you take all this with a grain of salt because you know, rumors. AMD's planned new chip is an APU, which is a combined CPU and GPU, which AMD has been known for in the past. I've made a few PC builds with APUs. Traditionally though, APUs usually aren't the most powerful chips on the market. Just saying. This APU is rumored to be codenamed Project Magnus. Here are the rumored specs. This is going to be an 11 core CPU, yes 11, which is split between 3 Zen 6 and 8 Zen 6C cores, plus a large 264mm squared graphics die with a 384-bit memory bus, well surpassing current consoles. This chip is designed so that it can go in all future Xbox hardware slated around 2027, and this includes the actual next-gen Xbox, mobile handhelds, and cloud hardware and data centers. This will be using the uDNA architecture as we talked about in previous videos. This way, every platform and every game can be compatible with one another. This is the kind of stuff that I've been saying that they have been needing to do for years now. Now they're also saying that this chip is not inexpensive. APUs have been known to be less expensive for PC builds because you don't have to worry about the cost of a discrete GPU. The idea is that an APU will save you the cost of having to buy both a CPU and a GPU so this chip must be very powerful if they're saying that this is very expensive. It has also been reported that Microsoft is making multiple Xbox consoles, a lower end and a higher end version. And since this new APU is quite expensive, they are ballparking these new Xboxes to start from $700 to, yikes, $1,500. Ah! If only someone could have called this sooner. Oh wait. I called this almost exactly several months ago. Check that out here. Now this chip will be used in data centers to provide the same performance for those who stream games from Xbox Cloud. That's the point of the uDNA architecture. Now what's very interesting is that this new chip is toted to be more powerful than what's being used on GeForce Now. These aren't my words. This was said on one of Colt Eastwood's latest videos. Also, they're including their cloud, which is an upcoming next generation leap, set to be far more powerful than the current NVIDIA GeForce Now. Now, whether you trust Colt here or not, I'm letting you know this so you don't think that I made this up. Now, I believe he means more powerful than the ultimate tier with the 4080s. I'm not sure about the upcoming Blackwell upgrades GeForce Now has in the works. I'm assuming he's referring to current power. So with this news, we can basically guarantee that the performance in the cloud will match or even be better than your local next-gen Xbox in 2027. This backs up basically everything I've been saying in the past year. My biggest problem with this is that the new Xbox hybrid will be quite expensive. $700 is bad enough, but $700 to $1,500 is quite extreme. I have never spent more than $1,200 on the components of building a decent machine for myself. Of course, I don't go balls to the walls with my builds, but $1,500 sounds awfully high. Now, this is where I think Xbox Game Pass will come in and or new cloud-only tiers. Remember the campaign Everything is an Xbox is still in full swing. If you can't afford the new Xbox, you'll be able to play next-gen games on anything that will be able to stream them. Current generation Xboxes Series S and X can handle decoding AV1, so they'll be able to stream next-gen games in 4K with ease. So are they next-gen consoles? Technically, they'll be able to stream next-gen games. Don't have a console? Stream games on your mobile device. That can stream next-gen games as well. 
Do you see where I'm going with this? They don't really care whether you buy stuff or not. That's why everything is available to play as an Xbox. That's why they don't care if their Xbox cost $1,500. Don't forget about the statement Microsoft made about price increases about two months ago. We understand that these changes are challenging, and they were made with careful consideration giving market conditions and the rising cost of development. Looking ahead, we continue to focus on offering more ways to play more games across any screen and ensuring value for Xbox players. Tell people you want them to play on the cloud without telling people you want them to play on the cloud. This was a direct statement so people can play games on other devices through the cloud. Just in case you were wondering. Also, there are a lot of other PCs you can buy that are much cheaper than $1,500. So the question is, will you be able to buy this chip for yourself and make your own PC build from it? Now that's a good question and I hope you'll be able to because I want to make my own Xbox. Hit my Xbox. <laughs> Maybe I should start a series. Anyway, this unified hardware is highly needed within the industry. This will help not just the manufacturers, but the game developers so they're not hindered by the limitations of lower end console hardware as they have been for decades now. Are you going to save up for the new hybrid Xbox in 2027 or continue to use the cloud to play your games on any device? Let me know your thoughts on this leaked next-gen hardware in the comments below. And if you like this news update on the next-gen Xbox, give us a like. Also, make sure to join as a member of the channel or join our Patreon and our Discord in the links below. And above all else, make sure to subscribe to keep it locked right here at the only place we can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle. And remember what Papa Phil said. When we look in the future, we see a world where game creators will natively be building cloud-based games first. They will think first about their game running in the cloud with almost unlimited access to the hardware capability that's available in a data center. They'll be able to scale the capabilities of their games up and down, potentially hosting hundreds of thousands of players in a game or making use of multiple CPUs and GPUs in the cloud to deliver experiences that no local hardware could unlock.